Oh, GitHub is confused. I was I had the my .edu email in there, and then I no longer have that email, and so now they're telling me that I need to downgrade to free. But I did downgrade to free, so I'm not really sure why they have this big banner yelling at me. But I'm wondering if it'll go away. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, let's just cover some things that we have done. So we got the any source merge. All right, I think we have enough people on here. Uh, uh, John, uh, can you hear the screen? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, John, can you please share the screen? Oh, you're not sharing. Ah, my bad. Thank you. All right. Cool. So yeah. So let's. I think probably everybody who's going to join us on right now. So uh, next Tuesday's meeting, I have to make it an hour earlier. Uh, I'll bump it up in the. Uh, um, um, wait a minute. This is Tuesday. Wait. What happened here? Oh, I accidentally deleted Tuesday's meeting. Okay, um, so next Tuesday's meeting, I have to make an hour earlier. Okay, God damn it. Okay, there we go. Now all is well. Okay. Why is this? God damn it. Arr. Sorry. I don't, want to, I don't want to fix this. There we go. All right, now all is well. Okay, so yeah, next Tuesday's meeting has to be an hour earlier. Um, we got the any source merged, um, which is basically just the config parser based one. Um, parser based source. Um, so this will be be the basis for a new source tutorial based on or so for how to write a file source. Um, and then let's see what else got merged. Um, oh, yes. Machu fix the edit on GitHub button. Nice work. Um, oh yeah, we got doc testable examples for the database operations. Okay, and I have some notes on that. Um, and then, yes, we got the BINSEC operations in, so, uh, Um, so we got the, yeah, we got these binary security analysis operations merged. Um, database operations. Okay, yeah, and then the unit or so doc tests are now run by unit tests instead of Sphinx doc test. All right. All right. And so with that, I had to change uh, some, um, oops, wow, it's laggy today. Uh, unit testing doc tests resulted
So it resulted in some changes, um, which might be interesting to you, Hashim, because you might just want to see like what happened there um, for the next ones. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to make it easier to speed up that net um, the slowness with this slowness with the net um, cache download extract um, test. Uh, let's see. So this is what it looks like. And also this. Okay. So basically, uh, I just went through and I made I made a couple changes here. Um, but let's see, anything of real significance just sort of like made things look different. Um, um, let's see. Most of them had to do, there were things that, okay, so I got rid of the doc test header. Um, so basically now everything within DFFML is accessible to all of the doc tests. Um, and if you need more things, then um, you can look at this file here, test, test doc strings. And there's some stuff that goes on in here. Basically, we go through and we grab all the modules within that directory, all the Python files, and we import all of them. And then we basically just go through and look for any, um, we look for any, um, anything with a doc string that has a, you know, a testable example in it, and then we go and uh, we run the test using the doc test module. And now the new thing here is that we can do a sort of finer grained um, setup and teardown for each test. Um, so for example, like on the accept user input operation, you basically give the path to it. Um, so like instead of DFF, right? So the, the path to accept user input would be dfml.operation.io.accept user input. So if you wanna, provide some wrapping around that you say wrap and then you convert you basically just flip the dots to underscores and so you say wrap underscore operation underscore io underscore accept user input and now this is the thing that's going to happen um before um it's basically a context manager it's a context manager around what happens before this test or the test of or the doc test of this thing um and so then we can make the uh the the um, the mocking and stuff on the inputs and stuff just for that unit test or this just for that doc test um, and for I had to do this for accuracy and predict I had to train the model first um, because they aren't getting in order anymore um, it's ending up running um, predict after accuracy and or it's ending up running train after accuracy and predict so therefore we had to train the model first um, and you can also do things like if you say uh, wrap operation db this is going to run before everything in operation db and then these are going to run more specifically um, so basically if i'm running the dfml.operation.db.db query lookup um, doc test then it's going to run this wrap operation db first and so basically for everything within operation dot db dfml dot operation dot db we're going to create these tables so i copied your stuff um, out of i basically i took it out of the doc test header and i copied it into this function now um, so now yeah you see i just copy pasted it into here um, and then since um, everything runs in, within its own example directory now. So everything runs within its own uh, temporary directory. So first we create the temporary directory for it, and then we run the test, uh, or we run the doc test. And so we have to, we create this uh, SQLite database for, that's why I had to change them, um, was, was, is because now they don't run in the same order, so we didn't end up with quite the same output and stuff so I had to tweak them a little bit but I tried to get it mostly in the same order um, so you can run one doc test from the setup like the wrapper of another doc test so to get the 
like for the query lookup operation to get it looking the same, I ran the insert operation and or I ran the insert doc test and then I ran the insert or update doc test. Um, and basically that one errors because it doesn't look up and it says, oh, there's the one that we inserted in there. So it's not expecting that. So you can say, don't check the results. Um, and so basically this, it basically just gets everything in the right state. These wrap, whatever, help you get things in the right state for your doc test. Um, and then this is just the thing that runs the doc test. This creates a test case. Um, and so then there's some documentation under, where did it go? Um, so there's some documentation under, oop. Uh, contributing documentation. Okay, doc tests. So this sort of shows the new way of running them. And the thing about this, the main reason why I wanted this is I'm about to add this new high level function and I want to be able to run the doc test individually. So then I spent like 20 hours doing this for some reason because it seemed like a good idea. Um, seemed like a good idea at the time, right? Um, so now you can run doc tests individually. Uh, so you don't have to spend time running all the other ones if you're only working on one. Um, so. Yeah, that's convenient. Let's see. Okay, so there's the docs for it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully that that ends up being helpful. Um, and then I think so. I was I'm I was messing around with trying to speed up the net thing. I think I'll probably uh, I'll probably um, I'll hopefully get to it today. I think I've almost got it. Um, but we can do finer grained mocking and stuff. And the other reason I needed this is I needed to, I needed to like set up this whole TCP server and stuff. And for an example on the, on the run data flow stuff. Um, and yeah, it was, it was becoming a mess. So hopefully this, this makes things easier to do set up and tear down around doc tests. All right. So that sort of covers like what's been going on. Does anyone do want to broadcast to anyone else what they've been doing? Um, I just I thought this probably affects everyone. So I wanted to cover this. Um, but we can uh, we can move on to uh, whoever wants to go next. Hello, John. Hey. Yeah, How's it going? Sure, yeah. sure you... It's going fine. Uh, can you look at the PR of uh, related to Java. Yes. It's been a long time since then. Yes, I got that. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Ah, I didn't get a chance to look at this. Damn it! Ah, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, we were supposed. To, I was supposed to look at why is it not creating the temporary directory? Okay, let's find out. I have to do my performance review this week, and so I'm uh, good. It's been. It's been now. Uh, <coughs> We have to like write our own. Oh, damn it. Okay. Is it still recording? Okay, good. We have to like write our own performance reviews. So it ends up being kind of weird. It's like you write it and then they decide whether it's good or not. Um, let's see. Okay, dependency check. Oh. It looks like it is actually not creating the file inside the temporary directory that I'm creating, but it should. It looks like file not found. Well, it looks like this is trying to open uh, root slash dependency check report dot JSON, right? So there is no tempter in front of this. So something happened where tempter became nothing. Um, I actually printed that uh, command. And it shows the actual the actual path of the attempt, and it works fine with that. Okay, let's see. <coughs> hmm. That's funny. It 
it's not printing the logging output right there. Okay, wait. Oh, here it is. So, temp slash. Okay, let's check the code here. Yeah, it looked right. Um, yeah, when it does the join, it's not doing the join. Oh, because you put slash here. So you can't put slash here. Because when you're doing the join, that is going to add the slash. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I bet that was the only thing I was missing from a long time. I wasn't getting that. Thank you. No worries. Sorry, I'm sorry I couldn't see that earlier. I looked at this a few times, and I was like, I just couldn't figure it out. And I don't know. I just it's, sometimes you don't see things right away. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, I hadn't had time to pull it down and actually mess with it. Okay. So, I mean, that should fix this. The one thing we need is, yeah, we need to make sure that if package... Yeah, I have made the code. Okay, you, you, you're going to push that? Okay. Yeah. Sweet. And then I think we're done here. So. Yeah, it is good. All right. And then the other thing is I wanted to say, um, so let's see. So should I dependency check? You are actually writing it in the 24th of April, shouldn't you create a new uh, minutes for that? Um, Friday, 24th. I think oh, sorry, might, sorry. No, no it's, worries. It's, no, I did that earlier, yeah. though. I did do that earlier, <laughs> actually. So <laughs> that was exactly what was going on in like, the beginning of the meeting. I was like, damn, I did it again. Okay. So, uh, um, so, okay, so uh, fixed issue with pathlib separator. That join uh, having a hash it. Um, okay, and now should I? So I'm going to try to. John will try to. Um, let's see. Yeah, John will. Uh, create the first subflow um, and then it so I'll create the first subflow as an example so Yash can start converting the rest of the operations we have to be run within subflows for their respective languages, and then we'll be able yeah. and so this will this will end up with our, our tool that can actually be run on multiple languages now. Um, yeah. So that was I was going to ask you for something. Yeah, I, well, I'm sorry. I need I've been needing to do that. I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to. So if I'm going to do, let's see what I'm going to do. Um, I said I was going to do something else today. Um, let's see. And now I've already forgotten. <laughs> Too many things. All right, okay. Uh, is there anything else um, you need from me right now, Yash? Uh, I just want to ask what should I work on next and you have given me the task of data flow. Uh, yeah, right. Next. Yeah, okay. So so then in that case, I'll definitely, I'll definitely, let's see. We'll, we'll, I'll definitely try to get that kicked off today and then let's just make sure that, uh, that this, we have a test for that guy, this guy with a jar file. Um, for that single file, if it gets told to scan a single file. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Sweet. All right. Thank, Thank you very you much. Jonathan. Thank you. All right. Who's so? Who's uh, who wants to go next here? Uh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I wanted you to uh, assign me a task, uh, something I could work on next. Yeah, okay, so let's see. Um, what do we got here? Um, oh, I had something that was I was thinking of. Um, da, 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 what was it? Okay. Let's go. 
Man, I had something in mind. I just thought I'd need to be writing this stuff down. Okay. Um, maybe it's under issues. Maybe I did. Let's see. Um, oh, these guys. Or wait, no, these are just tests. Um, well, it still would be good. Um, yeah, it would be good if we had test cases for this. Um, it's sort of in the vein of like, you know, you've already written the unit test for the, for the, um, asynchronous ones. This is basically just, or well, you've written the doc test for the asynchronous ones. This is basically going to be like, um, let's see. Uh, well, yeah, I'll just open this link. You can see it here, but we're missing code coverage on this stuff. Um, and so I think if we look at just like the, um, let's see, tests, high level. All right, so it's going to look very similar to, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, it'll probably look very similar to this. Um, doesn't this have... Oh, I thought this had load and save tests in it. Oh. It's going to look very similar to this. Um, so basically we have... I mean, these, these guys... Or I guess train is already tested. Well, we, we still want to have tests for it. So basically just... Take this, um, take what's going on here, and don't put async keywords in front of the tests, um, and and just run the same stuff. Honestly, yeah, you may be able to just copy paste this and remove the async keywords, um, but let's see. And then no, that won't take you very long. So let's see, what else can we get you to do? But if you could do that, that would be great because we're missing coverage there. Um, Oh, sure. Um, save and load tests. Also good. Let's see. But oh, this could be good. Um, because I feel like we've been running into this recently with the progress on downloads. Um, let's see. Uh, hmm. Let's see. There's a lot of things here, but let's see. What's something that might give you something to, like chew on? Um, oh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. I don't know how long this will take. It may not take as long as possible, but this would be very helpful. Um, so basically, if you look at... Let's see... So, so if you look at this issue here, um, or if you look at basically any class that's still there's, so right now the way it works is is we have that config equals right, and then when you instantiate the class, you should pass the config as the first argument. Well, there's also like some stuff that was done to make it so that if you just pass the keyword arguments to the config structure, then it automatically instantiates the config structure. Well, we need to make it so that if um, if we don't pass the config or like if we don't pass the config structure, we introspect that all caps config and check to see if it has all default arguments. If it has all default arguments, then we just instantiate the class with the the default config class. Um, so that's that's what we're doing here. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it's going to be like a little bit of trickiness, um, Python wise. I think you're going to need the, um, you're going to need the, I think data classes dot fields and stuff. Um, let's see. Let me just make a note of that. So, um, data classes dot fields will be helpful here. Um, so let's see. Yeah, this one would be good, and then. this one would be good too and this one is probably just we 
this may be as easy as pasting from test slash my level and removing the async keywords. Okay. Um, yeah, so, oops, I was going to give you that issue link. Yeah, so these two are probably good next targets, and then if you get done with those and you want something else immediately after, the save and load need tests, and this is probably going to be pretty simple. You could even use something like... Um, uh, well, I guess you might want to make like a fake source or something. Or, no, I guess you could just use a regular source. But basically, yeah, the save and load functions need tests. And I think they have doc, they have examples. So this is might just be as easy as, or do they have examples? This might just be as easy as, as copy pasting from the examples too. Um, but they're just things that need to happen. Um, so let's see. And then other than that, I feel like... I may get done with that pretty quick, so let's see. Uh, da, da. Okay. I mean, there's some other stuff. Let's see. Oh, let's see, let's see. Um, source directory source parsers. configuration parameter sources. Um, if you wanted to add like a model, there's I don't know. Do you have any interest in just doing some model stuff? Because I know you've been doing a lot of doc test example things, but it might be interesting for you to like you know, get your feet wet with some, some models. Do you have interest in that or like there's other things too? Yeah, sure. I could do that. Cool. Yeah. So this, um, what is this? I think, um, did anybody, I don't know, I guess, does it, I don't think anybody on the call proposed doing the auto scikit learn. And I don't think, did anybody, is anybody proposing that? Hmm. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, but uh, John, I think somebody was saying that they'll be putting it in JSOC. Oh, maybe it was. was in the Gitter. I don't okay. know. Okay. Okay. Well, that's then. Yeah. Let's, let's hold off on that one. Um, let's see. Let's see. What was another one that I was thinking about? Um, it's on the first page. There is one more on the first page. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's okay. If they were, then let's just skip that. Um, this fast AI. Fast AI. Yeah. So this guy seems to have dropped off the map, though. Um, so I don't. Yeah, I don't know if he's still around because he kind of like made one change and then never came back to it. Um, actually, he made two changes and he doesn't seem to have responded. So my guess is this is not going to happen. Oh, actually, this would be a good one. This is already like part of the way done. If you want to figure finish up this, this would be super great because this like makes things really slow. The fact that this isn't done. Um, so basically, what this is, if you want to take this and finish this up, this would be, and then you can sort of see how the models work too. Um, sure, so sure thing. Off this, It'd give you like sort of like you know you some the. Uh, a, a smooth introduction to what's going on in the models. So you get to see the code and stuff. Um, so basically, what's going on here is um, so uh, uh, importing at uh, importing at the top of a Python file results in 
the module being loaded whenever the file is loaded, of course. Um, when we list all, uh, or when we look through all, um, like, basically this, this patch will make it, will make loading, or will make, like, it'll just speed up things, we'll speed up things in general up any time when all modules or all models are listed because so in one of these examples is the uh, HTTP API um, for example by the HTTP API um, because TensorFlow which is huge only gets imported when the model is instantiated. Um, does that sort of make sense? We're basically just importing it dynamically. Um, so, yeah, cool. Um, anything else you wanted to talk about, or yeah, also. Uh... Will we want to uh, change all our previous doc tests to adapt to unit test? Well, so they'll all get tested automatically, basically. That was like, that's why this took so long. Um, so let's see. Let me pull up the. Uh... Okay. So you noticed our, and our coverage increased too by like a percent. Uh, because now they're getting tested. Oops. Now they're getting tested with everything else. So. All right. Um, hmm. oh, this is not. Oh, doc strings. All right, so basically all of these, like, they're all being tested here. And I think it added, like, 44 unit tests, but basically we're not testing them anymore um, within the, the doc test library. So if you run, like, I, I put, so if you see this link, it'll show you how to run them individually. Um, or if you just want to run all the doc tests, you can run them like this now instead of the old scripts doc tests. Um, and then if you want to run one individually, like this explains, basically remove dfml dot and change all the dots to underscores. And now you've got uh, your individual doc test. Right. So now they run as a part of like the main test suite, basically. Cool. Yeah. Right. What else? Uh, what else is going on with everybody? Uh, John, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Himanshu, you can go first. Oh uh, no! Last time yeah, you were left out, so I think you should go first. <laughs> Thank you, uh, John. Did you yeah. uh, take a look at the comment I made in the pull request? I did, with the regards to a knit. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I couldn't find. I thought there was somewhere um, where we're using a knit um, in one of the data classes or one of the configs, you know. Um, so I guess I guess um, as long as we we can fix that, right? As long as we can make it so that that works, then we're good. Um, I have changed every arc command, and what's left is is this issue only, I think. Okay. That's why everything's a, failing. Is it an issue, though, or is it like, I mean, so... I mean, not an issue, just uh, like... It's just like, what's going on, and so is it like we need to keep changing things, or...? Uh, no, the thing is that uh, I, we are, I'm not able to, like, 
reorder the things because giving init is equal to true overrides everything I do in that in that for in the two for loops I made. Oh, okay, so if we keep init equals false, like does that does that work, or is there any places no, where that, that works? doesn't work either? Because we need to initialize the classes. Hmm. Okay, so. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. So, okay, you're saying annotations. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Um, uh, when I update the annotations in the for loops, then then after that, if, uh, if I give init is equal to true, then it gives the same error as model that model error, right? Of yeah. non-default argument before the log one, after the log one, sorry. Okay, let me pull this down. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, great. We hit this. God damn, I don't understand what this is. This is some kind of This is ridiculous. Okay, so what this is, is, let me see, let me try this. Okay. File source config takes no arguments. Takes no arguments. Hmm. Okay. Non default argument model follows default argument. Wow, we're 
doing this on setup. Let's try this. Nope. Okay, so model config. Non default follows default. Um, oops, I have the annotation stuck quick. Uh, so, as long as the init is set to true, uh, everything yeah. you have, I've written before that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It it always gives the same error, and after uh, if I if you print the data data class take after uh, after the initialization after the instantiation of the data CLS, you'll see that uh, doesn't matter when in it is true. What you have written before doesn't matter. Sorry, say print where. Uh, you uh, print data C after in, in uh, giving in it is equal to true after that line. Okay, so if you print it there. I'll notice that it's not, it's not, okay, let me just read this real quick. Okay, so, all of a sudden we have log, okay, but it's in model, okay. Okay, now I understand why you did MRO. Okay, I was wondering what was going on with that. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay. Okay, class orientation. Complaining about here, we're complaining about model command. Looks like um, model command config and model, which is class model annotations. Got, let's see. Default missing type. Okay, yeah, and clearly you put log before model and annotations. But data classes that data class is not happy about that. So let's go look at that. Okay. <laughs> Only consider fields in the init call. Oh crap! For formatted the whole file with black. Uh, okay. All right. Fine. I guess that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, where is that line now? For Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so field log field model. Okay, it hit field model. So it hit log first. Um, well, wait a minute. It looks like... Hmm. Okay. So class list default dict, or new dict default dict. Okay, so we grab the annotations. Class dict is class dict. Okay, for var and class annotations. If it's not a data class. Um, So if we do see missing type, um, then we say new dict equals Okay, so if it's missing, it goes in new dict. If it's not missing, it goes in default dict. Uh, missing will be new dict, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So missing. Uh oh, they're both there in both. That's what's going on here. Let's see. So. Uh, uh, can you go back to that print statement um, of new of missing in there? Yeah, so new dict and default dict, and okay, so like... uh, okay, uh, okay. So missing contains. So it looks like they are the same right now, and it, and it looks like log comes first. So uh, something must be wrong up in here and my guess is it's the let's see now well, let's just figure it out then. let's see we'll find out soon enough not yet no i'm good thanks bill yeah i'm good thank you i love you um let's see okay Okay, so there's something here. Four bar in class annotations. If not, it's data class. So it's ending up in new dict. So if. Uh, actually, I tried it with order dict too. And... Well, everything, so past Python, uh, I can't remember what it was. You can Google it, but past some version of Python, regular dict became the same as order dict, um, and we're past that version. So, yeah, I I had been using order dict everywhere, and I looked it up one day, and I realized, God damn it, I don't need to be doing this. Um, this is like so much extra typing <laughs> to type collections dot order dict when I could just be doing open close curly brackets. <laughs> yeah. I'd wasted so much time. <laughs> um, let's see. So, okay, so. Not a data class. Bar. Or let's see. If so. Okay. Wait a minute, what just happened? Oh. Like we just had a different error here. Okay. Um, 
So model command config, not a data class, not a data class. So we're in this loop. Um, fields get far. So it's not a data class. But we've got this data class fields thing. Okay. And they're showing up in new dict. Okay, so let's just see what's up with that. Not a data class. Missing type. Missing type object untagged. Or wait. Is this now? Okay, we need to do it in here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, well, none of those came through there. So, or not data class twenty. So that sh that there was, was correct. There was something I found to like uh, if if sources CMD config was uh, initialized with giving CMD config as a base class and before even before giving it as a data class it was uh, already a data class like so that is data class thing didn't work so I changed it to like uh, dot get data underscore uh, underscore data class underscore fields underscore. Okay, interesting. So that's yeah, that's very interesting. That means Python internally must making everything must make everything do that. Um, let's see. Um, data class. Okay. So default dict. Okay. Now I guess that's the question here. Let's just make this print. So wait. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. This is our mystery here. Um, default dict dot update class annotations. Okay. What happens if we do this? Okay. Missing. Okay, it's empty right now. Um, why do you shave? That's one other question. Was why were you shaving off that last index? Uh, that is the object that data oh, class just object. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So missing is new dict. Okay, so nothing ended up in missing. So I think this is sort of your answer for what needs to be debugged. Because um, I could continue, but we'll end up doing this for a while. Isn't this the CMD config class? So missing would be empty and there would have the log values. Let's see. Yeah, missing, well, missing should have... Um, should have the log value the log has a default value so it will go in the default diff. yeah yeah and new dict should have the model um but that doesn't look like it's there right now um or what we could do is new dict dot update class dot annotations for um found in default dict del new Just delete anything we found. Um, here, read write. 
before found in default dict. If found in. Oh, see, yes, I think um, I think what we're hitting here is that hmm. there are some errors because of like CSV source config and inheriting from the file source config. So I had to take care of that. I see too, what's so. going on. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's because it's actually going through uh, every config. Yeah, it's going through every config. Yeah. Uh, what the hell? That's why I had to make it very complicated with the update yeah, and stuff. with the MRO and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. Annotations items. Do we end up with what was what are the annotations to start with? Yeah, okay. So hmm. <laughs> take this offline and, and look at this more because I know we're, we're at time now and I know there's still some people who have, who have questions um, but so I'll look at this more so let's see issues with I'll probably figure it's probably something that's going to happen this weekend um, so of the diff, I guess. Okay, get, I'll just post this thing. How would I do that? Do I do? Oh no. Come on. God, stupid shit. I just want what I added. Okay. Eh. Okay. Wow, this is super. Not the best way to do this. Oh, I should have made a diff before and a diff after. Oh well. Okay, that's fine. I'll just like, I'll figure this out at some point. Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on this. Okay, so in the meantime, is there anything else I can work on? Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, okay. What would be good here? Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, John, I also need something to work on. Okay, yeah. Let's see. So, let's see. Okay. Uh... This is probably something that we're going to do after we unify. 
So let's see. Uh, um. Well, you could do this one. Um, come on, you. Um, yeah. Okay. That might be a good yeah, one, or good. you know, the yeah, cl cleanup stuff is not the most exciting, but uh, it needs to get done. So let's see. Um, there's also there was another one that was let's see. Let's see, and I think this would basically just be. So, John, well, look at this weekend. Um, okay, and then the other thing we had talked about. Okay, so one second. So, uh, so, so that was the other guy. Okay, let's see. Um, actually, I think we have. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember how to how to pronounce your name. Um, so uh, actually, it's Sudhanshu. Sudhanshu. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so Sudhanshu, were you looking at doing Auto SK Learn? Was that something? Yeah. Like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my proposal. Okay. So let's stay away from that. Um, let's see, and then let's let's then let's stay away from that one and let's do um oh, where was that i was just looking at that um i mean the best thing that you could do right now would be to see if you can figure out how to get um, 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 uh, Conda in uh, in the CI Himanshu for Vopal Rabbit. Um, have you spent? Okay. Have you have you taken? I know that we had talked about it, but I don't know. I don't think either of us had had time to actually try to go mess with the, the CI stuff and get it in there. I have seen it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I haven't tried that. Okay, so that would be that would be the best thing you could do because then we'll get all that work that you already did in there. Um, so, okay. or so, adding Conda to CI. Okay, and so a good way that you could probably test that out is, um, um, like. And, uh, Docker file or Docker Hub, I mean. Oops. Okay. Okay, I would try making it work in this first. So try. Making it work in first, um, because we can always basically take the whole CI and have it run in a Docker container. Um, so that's probably yes. first step is just just try to see if you can get get like the basic flow uh, working in there. Um, so basically, have it kick off that dot uh, CI slash run dot sh, um, and yeah. So yeah, that would be that would be the first thing to do, and actually that would help us too if we. Uh, well, we'll just see. We'll see if that works, and then if it does, um, if it does, great, because uh, that will be great. Um, let's see, and then so and then Saksha. Um, let's see. Okay, where did that go? Mm -hmm. 
let's see. So yeah, you did the MNIST example. What might be good in the same sort of vein as that? I guess if you could think of something that might be good, since you, you're familiar with how to write the examples, um, that's like a really high value thing to do. Um, so uh, because you know, the, the more we can document and explain to people, the, the better, right? Um, so something like that. What is another thing like that? Um, Let's see. Okay. These classes. <laughs> I think. Let's see. Let's see. How should we do this? Okay. I'm this. And well, so there is one. Let's see. Mm. Uh, sorry, I just want to make sure that we're, we're picking something good for you here. You're about to go into the sources and do the source, the data flow source. So if you want to do, actually, you could do the data flow source right now. Um, so oh, yeah, I want to play with data flow and operation stuff. Yeah, so that would probably be the best thing for you to do right now is to look at. Um, um, so let's see. Where is that issue? Where is that? Oh, well, it's not super important. You can always find it, but uh, pre processing. Okay, I can't spell pre processing. I swear I spelled that correctly, but okay. Or wrong, the same way, at least. Okay, so this stuff was like focused on like getting operations, right? We had this whole fancy schmancy config scheme of everything. Um, so, and that was like to make it so we can map operations. Um, but what we could do here is basically um, you could take... So let's see. Um, operation based pre processing source. Uh, oops. So you can take um, data flow based. Okay, so let's see, how, how would this work? Um, so we'll take our source, it'll be, it will be a source with the config parameter with two, let's see, or let's see. Um, oh, let's see. Yeah, so it'll be a source and the config parameter for this source takes, it'll take probably the, so it'll be similar, similar to the database source. 
it will take uh, similarly, sorry, to how how the database source takes a DB, it will take a source in its config. It will take a source. Um, it will take a data flow and it will take um, features. Um, and so you can basically say, um, ooh, how do you want to do this? Okay, so you'll want to take You want to have its repos method iterate over the um, the self dot config dot source dot repos um, and run the data flow on each repo dot features um, using features dot features or sorry using self dot config dot features ah there's another issue that would have helped with this uh, as the input definitions um, so let's see, and how should you do this? Um, uh, what's the best way for you to do this? Um, actually, this is perfect. This is perfect. Okay. So yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Um, all right. So let me know if this makes sense. Let's just recap here real quick. So we create this pre-processing source, this data flow based one. Um, all right, apparently I can't spell that right now. Based. There we go. Pre-processing source. So we're going to create this uh, pre-processing source. And it's going to have at least probably just three config parameters right now. Um, and in its config class, it's going to have the source, the data flow, and features. And now what you're going to do is the, the update method uh, should just call uh, self.config.source.update. Um, well, um, or well, let's see. So when you see, OK, so all right. Uh, you can't obviously call self.config.source.repos and self.config.source.update. You're going to have to create the context first, right? Um, so, like, so let's see. Create the source context from self.config.source. Yeah, self.config.source similarly to how um, database source does it with the DB. Um, and then you're going to use that source context and you basically, when you implement the repos method, you iterate over the source context repos, and you run the data flow on each repo.features, and you use the config, the features from the config, as the input definitions. And so what you'll want to do is say, um, you know, like, for feature in self.config.features, you're going to make... Um, 
uh, like def feature definition equals definition um, and then feature dot name feature dot d type um, and then that's probably like stir uh, right because this will be like an int feature dot d type will be an int or something um, feature dot d type will be a class such as int or float um, and so yeah so feature definition and then you're going to take those feature definitions and you're going to create so take those feature definitions and create inputs out of them and let's see you're not super familiar with this stuff so let's give you some examples here everybody has been doing a great job of making examples um, let's see Let's see, so um, that's a good one. I mean, just to, so take a take a look at, at these operation examples to sort of get the feel for how do um, like how do you run the data flow and, and how do you how do you add inputs? Um, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to not add them to the seed, but you're going to add them to um, the uh, you're going to add them like sort of like this. Actually, this is probably a pretty good example, this DB query insert. So you're going to take the data flow, like the data flow is provided to you in the config. And so, oops. Um, then uh, run the data flow provided to you in the config and pass all the features as inputs. Um, oh, this is going to be really great. Um, so let's see. All the features as inputs. Um, and that is like this inputs here and I'll sort of make it the same thing so you can see that that's the same thing as input so run the data flow provided by to you in the config and pass all the features as inputs um, and then use the output so results as the um, um, as the new repo dot features, um, so which means means you'll call repo dot evaluated using results as or you just call repo dot evaluated results. Then you'll yield the repo. Or wait, no, they're not called repos anymore. God damn it, record. <laughs> Oops. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Oh um, uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay. So, and. Okay, so yeah, this will be really sweet. Um, does this make sense? Uh, yes, it kind of makes sense. I'll take a look at the examples and yeah. see what I can get started at. Okay, cool. Um, and I was also working on a new, I guess I'll, I'll be able to add that function now. So um, I was working on a, a, well, it's just, it's basically, if you call memory orchestrator.run, I'm, I'm adding the same function, but it's just going to be run, and it's going to be in high level. So um, I'm going to try to add some examples to that, too. That's why I did the whole doc testable examples thing. Um, okay, 
Cool. So let me just say, oh. and then let's say this is okay. This let's see. sources and where's data flows? Data flow. Okay. Sweet. Also, like. Uh... After you after you've taken a look at that request, we can also add the CLI documentation. Oh yes, exactly. We'll want to do some more CLI documentation on various things, especially like merge and stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the data flow and everything merge and stuff. Yeah, data flow has some CLI documentation, but it's not. It's not. It's not know, very it's, clear. It's not very clear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't have a lot of examples. If here. someone doesn't have much experience in DFML, then it won't be very clear to. Him. Yeah, yeah, it's only kind of useful after reading all the tutorials and use cases and stuff. So we need to have some more fleshed out stuff here. That's a great point. Um, all right, cool. Thank you. All right, so Sudhanshu, um, did you were you looking for sort of the next work item, or did you want to talk about the? Uh, what did you want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, I was thinking, what next should I work on? So I'm thinking, like, since you did that, um, the idea here is kind of, since you did the uh, any source, that now you could go and write the tutorial on sort of how you wrote that. Um, cause that would be that would be the best thing for you to do right now, I think. Uh, where did the, did I make an issue for that? I thought I did. Um, yeah, there there was an issue, but I guess that issue was closed. I'm not uh, sure though. Oops, I must ask. It was at five fifty one. Oh yeah, create search for parsing any files. Um, yeah, yeah. This is okay, so this one, yeah, this. So now you've done this. So this one is close, and now this one is the next one. Um, sure. So yeah, so basically what you'll want to do is, let's just add a little more detail to this. Um, oh crap. Oh shit. Ah, damn it. Okay, I have, my, um, I have my performance review thing and I wasn't done writing it and it's at 11 here, so I'm glad I noticed that. Okay. Um, okay, so you'll want to uh, you basically you want to make a new you want to make a doc slash tutorial slash sources slash index dot rst uh, then take the existing tutorial and move it under um, docs slash tutorials or whatever the URL is slash sources slash um, um, like I don't know it's just like complex or something and then your new one will go under uh, you know sources slash file um, and then the idea here is just to explain um, explain how how you can write uh, a source which gets inputs or which reads data from some new file type with our example being the any file. Um, and then let me know if there's anything, uh, if, if you know you have any questions on anything, I would try to follow the, um, uh, let's see, try, what, what, why are you doing that? Try to follow the new model tutorial format um, where we um, uh, do literal include and
and lines to talk about individual sections of the files we're writing. Sweet. Cool, yeah, this will be great because I know there's been a lot of questions. This has been a frequent source of questions is, is how, do you, how, do you, how do I get data from my custom file format in? So, awesome. Sure, sure, sure. Great. Hey, thanks. Good job on that. That one looks, it looks thank real you, clean. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys. And I have to run now, um, but I will talk to you. Um, well, I'll talk to you on Gitter and I'll talk to you guys on Tuesday, but um, at an hour before the usual time, if you want to join Tuesday's meeting. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good have weekend. A good bye. bye, 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 bye. Good luck. Thanks.